Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, welcome to another Freestyle Friday where I get to do what I want. Last time I talked about one of the places I buy a lot of wine from, Underground Cellar. Well, I thought I might as well give Psalm Select some love in this episode. So, what is Psalm Select? Well, if you've watched the movie Psalm, then the name Ian Cobble should ring a bell. At the end of the first movie, he actually got a job offer as the brand ambassador for Krug Champagne. A few years ago, he decided to kind of cash in, so to speak, on his Master Sommelier's title and start an online wine retail shop of sorts. By the way, if you're from Krug, I need an ambassador in the Central Texas area. Hit your boy up. One thing to mention, I have an order from Psalm Select since February of 2020 for no reason other than I severely curtailed all of my wine purchases last year as part of my year of restraint for 2020. As I mentioned in the Underground Cellar episode, I haven't gotten anything from them either after all the wines I got in the first quarter of last year. And all of those wines actually had been purchased prior to 2020. I have bought more wines locally, but they've been in the under $20 range for the most part, and I have only reviewed a few of those. Most of the wines I have uh, just drank or bought to or brought to tasting group. COVID also greatly curtailed my purchases in general, plus since I have a lot of wines already, I have relied on my current seller for the most part to do my reviews. I also still get free samples throughout the year. It's kind of the perks, right? Anyway, Psalm Select has a daily offer. Unlike Underground Cellar, the daily offer here is just one wine. On rare occasions, typically during the holidays, it may be a three or a six pack. These offers are designed to sell out the day they are put out. Sometimes they don't, and sometimes the offer sells out pretty quickly and a new offer comes later in the day. But no matter what, if this offer didn't sell out, you still are gonna get the wine. Now, Psalm Select specializes in old world wines from my perspective. And it seems like Ian has a preference for French wines. As far as you know, he's still the main person responsible for the offers. <laughs> that's the jersey coming out. Or at least that's always been the appearance on the site. Occasionally, someone else will be the lead for the offer and write the notes for the wine. Many wines are from an iconic producer or it may be like a unicorn wine. Um, I've also gotten several library releases. Typically, these are also old world and many times these wines have significant age. I'm talking 15 to 20 years of age. Now, that doesn't mean every offer is that way, but it seems like it's somewhat frequent that you'll get some of these like more specialized wines, if you want to call it that. But anyway, you get a daily email with the offer. In this case, you have to visit the website in order to get the bottle price, unlike Underground Cellar, where the email tells you the price, or at least the entry level price. Each wine will have all the pertinent stats for the wine along with a write-up for the wine at the site. And then near the top of the order or the offer, there are six categories the wine is rated on using zero to five stars. Psalm Select's pricing seems to be fairly in line with what your typical wine shop would charge for the same bottle. Now shipping is free starting at six bottles. They do automatically charge you a delivery and insurance fee of $1.25 for one bottle. It goes up a little bit when you order more than one bottle. Um, I tested ordering four and ordering 12. At four, it was $2, and then for uh, 12, it was $3 for the order. Back in the day, this fee was 1% of your order. So if you ordered 20 bucks, or if your order was $20, then the fee was actually only 20 cents. This got changed to their current system at some time in 2019. Also, they weren't charging sales tax back then when I first started with them, but they do charge the appropriate sales tax now for wherever you live. They also have an option called build a case. Once you hit 12 bottles, then they will automatically ship to you. If you're say at 11 bottles and buy four from the deal, then they'll ship all 15 bottles. If you haven't gotten the 12 bottles in, in 60 days, then they will automatically ship to you whatever they held. 
I've never had this happen, so I don't know if you'll get charged anything. It's actually not stated on their site. Once the weather gets warmer, they have what is called summer hold. With this option, they will store everything you order and ship it in October or November, depending on when it gets cool enough to ship to your part of the country. You can also request a delivery with ice packs at any time for an extra fee. Now just realize that these dry ice packs won't last forever. So I'd avoid deliveries in the middle of summer with 100 degree weather. Yes, the truck seats may have AC, but they still can get really hot in those trucks. I've always used the build a case or summer hold option. Back in 2018, I used a summer hold and ended up with 36 bottles. It took like 10 deliveries over a two to three time frame to receive them due to how I ordered each wine. Basically, every time I ordered wine, I ordered like one or two bottles, so I would get a two pack shipper instead of just them consolidating and putting it into one box. From almost the beginning, they've had a blind six monthly option. I inquired about it a few years ago and I was even given the option of doing it at a small discount when I told them about the tasting group I was in. However, there didn't seem to be enough interest in the tasting group for me to either shell out the entire expense for the month or for them to share in the expense for it. It's normally $220 per month currently. It was $199 per month back then. I'm not sure when it went up as I thought it actually was still $199. This blind six is listed under the Drink Like a Psalm subscription, along with a regular non-blind six-pack and a also four-pack. The regular six-pack is $1.99, so I'm not sure why it's $21 more to wrap six bottles. Maybe the blind six takes more resources since it's designed to align with a typical blind tasting exam. They also add a little bit more uh, information to the package versus the six and four-packs. They've added other services over the years, too. One option is the sommelier concierge. This is a custom service where they will work with you on acquiring wine for your cellar or for special occasions or events. They've had this service for a little while now. I don't really actually remember when it started. In 2020, they also added a wine shop. Now, I really don't look at this part of the site very often, so I don't know how frequently the wines change in it. When I checked it out on January 5th of this year, they had a total of 170 wines. They actually had that total at the top of the page, so I didn't have to count it. They actually have a price range slider, and it has a range at the time from $20 to $900. Now, just to see what was on the top end, I used the slider to narrow things down. Now, above $585, there was only one wine. That was the 1990 Veuve Clicquot Brut La Grande Dame Champagne, and it's also in a Magnum. This is what they consider their Tete de Cuvée, or their top bottling. Uh, also known as a prestige cuvee. And yes, that bottle was $900. That $585 bottle was the 2018 Domaine du Jac Clos de Saint-Denis, uh, was a Grand Cru from Burgundy. Now, besides narrowing the selection by price, you can also select the type of wine, country, and region. Currently, they have 11 countries, though they have a United States and a USA. So that would count as a 12th country? Anyway, I'm sure it's related to how the wines are coded in the system. Oh, and when you adjust the price slider, the number of available wines actually updates in real time, along with the list of wines. In addition to that, they have a curated collection section. It looks like these may change from time to time. There's a contributing sommelier collection right now from D. Lynn Proctor. Now, if you don't know him, he is an incredible person in addition to an incredible sommelier. He was actually also in the Song movie with Ian. Now, D. Lynn never attained the Master Sommelier Diploma, and I actually do know Dylan personally. I met him at Texom well before that movie. I can tell you that just because he's not an MS, that doesn't diminish in any way how smart and capable he is as a sommelier. I've always held him in high regard. When he used to represent Penfolds, he was the first table I would visit at the grand tasting event that caps off the conference. At some point, we all make a personal choice as to how far we want to go in pursuit of a certification. And not just with the court, with, with anything college, career, technical certifications, etc. For myself, I'm pursuing the advanced sommelier certification. Once I get there, then I'll decide if it's worth my time and money to go farther. These things require a lot of commitment, especially at the advanced and master sommelier levels. Anyway, enough of that. Is this a site that is a good option for buying wine? Yes. Is it always the best price for specific wines? 
I can't speak to the wines in the wine shop as I really never use it. As far as a daily offer, I feel that they are good prices for them. It's possible you could maybe find the same wine for less locally or maybe even online. At worst, Psalm Select's pricing is slightly more expensive, but it's at least competitive. It's not like you're going to pay like $20 more on Psalm Select versus say wine.com or something like that. And remember, you have to factor shipping with those other online stores. Many of the selections are like walking into that specialty wine shop, harder to find, smaller or iconic producers. Each wine has a very good write-up associated with it. You can go back through your orders and reference those write-ups. I have yet to have one of those not available. Even my first order from December 2014. That would be, ta-da, a 2019 Quinta do Infantado, which I still have, by the way. All right, have notes to show bottle. I've never had an issue where I bought a wine and they didn't have it shipped to me, unlike Underground Cellar. The online experience has dramatically improved these five plus years I've used them. It's easy to navigate. While you can see your past orders, it's just a chronological list, so there's really no way to sort it, but that's actually minor. Underground Cellar also really didn't have uh, anything more than a basic filter either for your orders. They are responsive to any requests I've made too. If there was one thing I could change, it would be this, shipping, or more correctly, who they use, at least, for here in San Antonio. I don't know what it's like outside of San Antonio. But here they use a smaller service called LSO, or also known as Lone Star Overnight. While you can track a package, it's not as convenient as say UPS or FedEx to manage the delivery. For my wine deliveries with the other two, I normally request that I pick up the package at a drop-off location. That way I or someone else doesn't have to stay around the house all day to wait for it to arrive. These packages require a signature to receive them. I, and also, they have to check your ID to make sure you're old enough. Uh, and also, you're not supposed to be drunk. Anyway, I can say that sometimes the UPS and FedEx drivers have just dropped off a package that requires a signature without even knocking on the door or ringing the doorbell. And that wasn't just wine that's happened with. Now, I've actually gone to LSO's office to pick up wine once, well, maybe twice. I don't remember how I did that, like how I arranged that. I think I had to call them after a missed delivery. Maybe I did it prior to delivery, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Anyway, it's more complicated for me, and I don't really have uh, the option to have wine delivered to my place of business since it's actually alcohol. And we do get a ton of deliveries at work every day, so the receiving department really doesn't have time to mess with that. At least back when I used to order a ton of wines online. It's a minor inconvenience at the end of the day, and it doesn't permit, prevent me from ordering. Like I said, in the last week's Freestyle Friday, I used Somsuck primarily for my old world wines and underground cellar for my new world wines. Sometimes I get wines from the other worlds instead from those places, and that's, that's fine. If you're looking for a good online option, Somsuck just may be worth it. Now that's gonna do it for today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and then tell all your friends. And until next time, we'll see you later.